Merrill Kelly, the headline in game two. What did you see out of him? Well, we saw his fastball that was perfect. We saw his changeup that was outstanding. We saw his slider working, and the only blemish was a pitch that Mitch Garver himself said, well, I normally don't hit that one, and it was just a low pitch that he got the barrel on, and that was the one hit, one home run, the one run that they scored. It's exactly what the Diamondbacks needed. We talked about it before the show, before the game on HQ. You wanted length out of Kelly. You got it. You wanted runs and then added runs by Arizona. You got it. The Diamondbacks wanted a win in Texas, and they got it. You know what I like? about Merrill Kelly, he's a gamer. He wants the ball in his hand. He wants to be in the big moment, and he delivered. And look, I know that they went down 0-2 to the Phillies in the NLCS, but it's a little different when you go down 0-2 in the World Series. And this was massive, this start. What did it mean for Arizona for him to go out and pitch seven innings? So how many times can you go down 0-2 and come back and win the series? It doesn't happen often. They were able to do it in the League Championship Series. The view of the World Series is you don't want to go home to three four five without the split we got the split in 2003 critical and what I loved about Kelly is that after the blown save last night only 24 hours ago in the 11th inning you had a situation where they needed something out of their starter and he was sharp from the start and what I appreciated is that he also was getting early contact, which kept his pitch count down, which enabled him to go seven innings. No starters done that since 2019. So add it all up, and you have the exact perfect game plan for the Diamondbacks. It played out like it was scripted. And you're, one of your keys for the Diamondbacks was early pressure. And what did they do? They gave early pressure on Jordan Montgomery. Gabriel Moreno solo homer to make it one nothing. We saw the Josh young diving play which was a heck of a play but then Tommy Pham one of his doubles he goes four for four does get picked off in the game at a boy you know what the rest and then Guriel with an RBI single that inning was critical for Merrill Kelly to go out with the lead when he went back out there for the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, if you haven't seen this Diamondbacks team play all season, here's what you've been missing. You've been missing a team that is able to score in myriad ways. They can score with the long ball. They can go station to station. They can string two or three hits together. You may remember against the Dodgers, they broke the record with four solo home runs in a half inning. Never been done. And then they can get 16 hits like they did tonight. How many home runs out of 16 hits, Dermish? Total. One. One. 15 hits plus that home run. That is how you win when you put together a complete game. The only thing that didn't happen tonight is Seawald getting a chance to erase that blown save and come in and get another save. Why? Because they added on and they did not need him at all. Texas had just four hits in this game. Cattell Marte had a hit in this game to extend the longest postseason hitting streak ever. 18 game postseason hitting streak as he delivered a two RBI single to make it six to one. I mean, this guy just keeps on hitting and hitting and hitting. We've changed the full screen. It used to be that he was on a different list to start a postseason career. That was a fun one. Now this is it. There is no other full screen. Marte now has the longest hitting streak that started in 2017 of any player in the history of baseball. And the hit that he got, it was his last at bat, drives in two runs, removes any possibility of any comeback by the Rangers. A 9-1 final. Uh, they kept on adding on your guy Corbin Carroll. Couple of RBIs in this game. Adds on there. Adds on in the seventh. Uh, I, I mean, this team is starting to look like this relentless machine that plays this small type of baseball. And again, we go back to the team aspect. It is a team that wins games. Yes, the stars get the headlines, but in the end, it's the team that's winning these games. And the Diamondbacks they are a team right now that looks like they could win this whole thing, and I'm surprised. I really am, because they, when we, this postseason started, I didn't think they had any business being here. And here they are, now three wins away, and they're going back home.
So you're just a little later to the party than I am because I had the Diamondbacks losing in five games last round, but then I changed. You did and change. You're not willing to change. Yeah, you're right. I'm and little, I respect a little more it. stubborn. But it may be time now because now you're talking about a best of five. We're back to the division series. It's a best of five to win the ring, and Arizona gets three games at home. Problem with that, Texas undefeated on the road. So it's going to be very interesting. The middle three, hard to sweep those. So it's likely we're in for a long series of games that are going to be competitive. And Rangers, for all of you fans hoping they get their first ring, they're not hanging their head. They're going to get on the plane, they're going to go to Arizona, and they're going to be ready for game three. This is the type of series where you can rebound from a 9-1 loss, just like the Diamondbacks. May I remind you, Dermish, they lost 10-0 in game two to go down 2-0 to the Phillies. They rebounded after that walloping and won game three. Yeah, the Rangers 8-0 on the road this postseason as they head to Arizona for games three, four, and five. But before we look ahead to three, four, and five, I want to point out that in game one, the Diamondbacks allowed how many walks, David? Ten. And they had one in this game, and it came in the ninth inning. In garbage time. Yes. The important thing is the runners in scoring position, we say when you have enough at-bats, eventually you're going to cash it in. The best way to stop it is don't let anyone get to second base. The Rangers did not get an at-bat with the runner in scoring position until the bottom of the ninth when the game was over. I, we can't talk enough about the job that Kelly did in giving seven innings to this team and dominant innings, not stressful. So when we look for his availability later in the series, when we think about him because he's the game six pitcher, tonight's game, do you remember any stressful at-bats for him? No. Any stressful innings? No. Even when he struck, out, he struck out the side in the sixth. No stress, and that is so important because stress pitches, stress innings, they are much more difficult to recover from. Kelly is going to be on the plane playing cards tonight. Yeah, it's nice to head back home with a win. Uh, you don't want to allow free passes in the World Series. The only kind of free passes you want to give out are to celebrities. That's it. <laughs> so you don't, you don't want to give out free passes. So they cut that down. Now you look ahead to game three, Brandon fought, who doesn't give a lot of free passes. You saw in his uh, previous start, he has been awesome in terms of having command. The other guy is going up against Max Scherzer doesn't have the same command that he once did. It's the rookie against the veteran. What are your expectations for game three? And a double barrel question here. What do you need for Max Scherzer to be competitive in game three on the road? So a quick story, because we have time. When you get on the team plane in the front right, that's where the manager sits. And here's what's going to happen on the plane for Texas. They're going home. Yep. They're going to Arizona tomorrow. They may go tonight. Maddox, the pitching coach, they're going to sit down and they're going to talk about Scherzer. And what they're going to talk about is, what are we doing? Because he's pitching game three. Who are they going to have pitch after Scherzer? How many innings can they expect from Scherzer? And what a horrible position to be in that your game three starter, your trade deadline acquisition, the $40 million man, you're hoping he gives you three. That's the problem. For the Rangers to win game three, he's going to have to give you four plus. He's going to have to get you into the fifth, and he hasn't done that yet, and I don't know how likely it is. We are even Steven in the World Series heading to Arizona. So far, it has been a heck of a series. Game one was awesome. Game two was awesome for the D-backs because they answer back in the form of Merrill Kelly. Games three, four, and five in Phoenix at Chase Field. Game three coming your way Monday night. So a day off and back to baseball Monday night just after 8 p.m. Eastern time. And, of course, David and myself will be here for you pregame, mid-game, post-game right here on CBS Sports HQ.